Bringing 262 Heavy, wind calm, runway 31 left, clear for takeoff, caution weight turbulence, previous departure, heavy uh, 777. They are slow and often ugly, but the ultra transporters have an important job to do in today's military. The C-5 Galaxy is the biggest aircraft in the United States Air Force inventory. It is an iconic piece of military hardware. They're not flashy. They don't perform stunts. Rarely do they do flybys. But whenever they appear at an air show, they draw a crowd that look like ants beside this massive tank carrier. When you really need to move large objects by air, you call on the Antonov AN-225. Used to move massive objects and originally capable of carrying the Russian version of the space shuttle in a piggyback layout, the Antonov AN-225 is a real heavy lifter. It even has the ability to kneel in order to take long loads, such as rocket boosters. Capable of hot and high performance, despite its size, it has been used to move rocket boosters from Denver to launch locations out on the coast, capable of taking off from the 5,500 foot elevation Denver International Airport with a full load. Without these transports, the military would not be as mobile or as capable as it is. Regardless of the size and unglamorous nature of flying military transports, they are a vital piece of a well-rounded arsenal. Another set of aircraft that is sometimes overlooked is the helicopter. Originally developed during World War II, the helicopter didn't come into being until the advent of jets removed the short field capability of many military aircraft. And even then, it wasn't until the Korean War that helicopters made a mark on the battlefield. But what a mark they have made since. The venerable H-13 Su was made famous by the TV show MASH, but its real-life exploits made it an angel of mercy for many wounded soldiers during the Korean War. It was capable of going places that no aircraft could go, and evacuating wounded soldiers to MASH units, where if that soldier arrived alive, their survival rate topped 90%. Many men owe their lives to this strange, slightly underpowered, glass bubbled helicopter. The defining helicopter of an entire generation is known not for its look so much as its sound. When the Huey thump is heard, people around the world know an iconic helicopter is about to make an appearance. While the loss rate was horrendous, the Huey pilots flew on, delivering troops, supplies, and evacuating the wounded often at great risk to themselves. The Vietnam War is forever linked in people's mind with the scenes of the UH-1 dropping off troops into the rice paddies and jungles. Today, that particular Huey Thump can stop many Vietnam vets in their path. Their eyes scanning the sky for the venerable UH-1 Iroquois. Derived from the UH-1, the AH-1 was a different beast altogether. Mean, fast, powerful. The AH-1 is the granddaddy of every attack helicopter in the world. Designed to escort transport choppers and take the fight to the enemy in Vietnam in ways the UH-1 wasn't able to. The AH-1 has lived on in, as the AH-1W attack helicopter. Serving with the U.S. Marines as their primary shipboard attack helicopter, it is easy to store on a ship because of its super slim profile, but it is still a feared and capable helicopter. The Westland Lynx is a Ferrari in the world of helicopters. The fastest helicopter in the world and one of the first fully aerobatic helicopters. The Lynx drove the pursuit of helicopter technology forward by leaps and bounds. 
a capable all-rounder and the primary helicopter of the Royal Navy. The Lynx is able to do just about anything it is called upon to do, from search and rescue, to anti-submarine, to ground attack. One of the strangest helicopters in the world is the S-64 Skycrane. It is a special built helicopter able to lift the heaviest of loads. Used in firefighting, logging, construction, and a host of other duties that are beyond the ability of all other civilian helicopters, the Skycrane is a heavy lifter of the civilian chopper world, even if it does look a bit strange. Loud, as big as a Greyhound bus, and faster than an AH-64 Apache, the CH-47 Chinook is the heavy-lifting, high-altitude, two-transporting champ in the helicopter world. Used for all kinds of duties, the CH-47 is able to fly higher and faster than just about any helicopter in the U.S. inventory. It's not pretty. It's not glamorous. But for countless soldiers needing a medevac, or for numerous civilians needing rescue after a natural disaster. The CH-47 is an angel of mercy. It'll do what other helicopters can't. Here in Colorado, when the Blackhawks couldn't go up in the mountains, it was a CH-47 going up to rescue people stranded from the floods. To some degree, every airplane is an experiment. While the shape might be similar to another, even a minor change can have drastic consequences in aviation. Not every plane built makes it beyond the experimental stage. Sometimes they're too expensive. Sometimes they're too complex. And sometimes their job was gone before they got off the drawing board. The Hughes XF-11 suffered from all of these. It was very expensive. Its counter-rotating props were very complex. And by the time it was flying, recon bombers had taken its job. When you add in an eccentric company owner that crashes a prototype, the XF-11, while an amazing looking plane, was destined to never make it beyond the experimental phase. It was cost and missiles that doomed the Avro Vigilant. A futuristic plane designed to fly fast and deliver a nuclear payload to Soviet Russian targets. The Vigilant program was terminated by the UK government. The mission had changed, and the introduction of ICBMs, better radio tracking systems, and high altitude missiles doomed the Vigilant to the dust bowl. Despite looking like it belongs in space. Suffering much the same fate as the Vigilant, the XB-70 Valkyrie sought to fill a similar mission profile. But when the same factors converged, the Mach 3 XB-70 was no longer needed. When missiles and the slower bombers could do the job cheaper and with less loss of life. An ugly duckling. The YC-14 sought to land the next generation transport plane for the Boeing company. While the C-17 was chosen, the YC-14 showed a unique design that thought to bring some proven technology in a new form to what is otherwise a pretty dull branch of military aviation. It might not have won the contest, but it certainly won the Interesting Transporter Award. Sometimes, that plane that looks like an experiment isn't. Sometimes, satellites can't do the job. When that happens, you need a spy plane. The U-2 was designed to fly where no missile could reach, at the edge of space. Using highly efficient wings and flying on the edge of stalling, the U-2 sought to soar above Soviet Russia and peer down to find her secrets. Most famous for finding the missiles that started the Cuban Missile Crisis and for the flight of Gary Powers was shot down in his U-2. The U-2 could deliver pictures that satellites of the time with their fixed track 
could not. When the U2 was deemed too vulnerable, Lockheed went back to the drawing board and came out with one of the most iconic military aircraft of all time, the SR-71 Blackbird. With performance numbers second to none, the ability to cruise at the upper reaches of jet flight in a highly technical guidance and camera system, the Blackbird was the spy plane of spy planes. With a semi-stealth design, speed and altitude, the SR-71 was shot at many times, but no missile ever caught one. Today, the SR-71 still holds numerous speed and altitude records, despite being designed nearly 40 years ago.